This program is brought to you by NBA League Pass. More dunks, more slams, more to love, live in HD. NBA League Pass, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. Here we are. We are here at on Rogers TV bringing uh, this beautiful hockey game between Osprey Hawks and Grand Valley Twisters. And you threw me off when you started. <laughs> so anyway, we're back here at the lovely Blade Show Arena. We're bringing the, the Georgian Bay uh, U9 uh, year-end tournament uh, to you on uh, this afternoon. And uh, uh, I, th I thought Spencer was my, my good friend, but after that, not anymore. But uh, we spent three uh, three games yesterday afternoon here at the, the at the arena, and we had a great time watching the, the kids play hockey. We got two games for you now, uh, Spencer. We, we were talking about the the four divisions, and we didn't get them all, but the Mathis, the the, the all the Maple Leafs named after the Maple Leafs, and you you didn't get uh, your favorite Leaf, but uh, they play they f they played round robin. Then they finished one, two in the division. Now they're playing for the championships of each division. Yeah, absolutely. And these are actually the two teams we didn't get a chance to see. They always play at the Junior MacArthur. And a buzzer issue there is the game actually is just about to start, and they're going to stop them quick. Well, they actually start the opening faceoff. We're going to turn around and bring you to play by play. Benz going to give you that. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, they're going again. We don't have goalie numbers. Well, at least we don't have goalie numbers. They're not normal goalie numbers. Our goalies for Grand Valley, the Twisters, is Derek Cordell, and the goalie for us is Nathan Walker. So, uh, and that's number two, or seven, pardon me, for Nathan Walker, and number 21 for Derek Cordell. Cordell is wearing a player's helmet, but at least Nathan Walker's got a hockey, or a goalie helmet, so I feel a little bit better about his situation. But as I talked about yesterday, Gord, quite l short benches for both sides. Um, Osprey's only got two players on the bench while the Twisters have three players on the bench. So I wonder if fatigue will eventually play a factor later down the line. So Osprey is in green and white on your right hand side of the, your screen and, uh, and Grand Valley is, is in the, the uh, maroon jerseys. And uh, something had went wrong with the clock and I guess that's where the buzzer went. Now they're trying to uh, solve that up and uh, solve that problem and uh, um, get that started. We can get this game underway. But uh, it's been so much fun watching these kids play. These are what they call local league leads, and of course that's what we uh, what used to be house league. And uh, so these teams represent their communities and they wear the jerseys with their communities and uh, they have a really good time doing that. And uh, uh, because kids are allowed to play hockey instead of being uh, shutting down because they couldn't uh, get enough people to play and I think uh, whoever invented local league uh, Spencer I said this yesterday uh, deserves an award so uh, uh, well, this is interesting I told the guys to go warm up and skate around and get themselves going again because they are having trouble with the clock it seems that uh, some technical difficulty scoring early in tonight's games and here they go again they're getting set to go See if we got a stopwatch, Gord, if we can't get the board going. But I do quickly want to mention Grand Valley and Osprey have already played in the round robin. They played the second game. Grand Valley beat Osprey 7-2, and that's why they ended up being first in the Tavares division. Osprey became second because they beat third place, Coldwater. So that's why they're right now playing in the final. I'll be interested to see, Gord, if, if maybe that first score line is a little bit disingenuous how close these two teams are or if maybe Grand Valley is just that good. Well, we were thinking about looking at the scores that possibly uh, the, if we were given odds, we'd probably give <laughs> odds to... Uh... And actually there are the round robin games, as you see there, Grand Valley beat Osprey and Georgian Shores by a combined score of 13 to three. And Osprey defeated Coldwater 7-6 in their very first game, then losing to Grand Valley, as you see there, 7-2. So because they beat Clearwater head-to-head, -head, they technically go ahead of them in the standings and are here tonight for the final of this little round robin in the Tavares division. 
Later on tonight, we're going to have the Matthews Division Final between Georgian Shores and Aura. We saw both those teams yesterday, and both those teams dominated. Georgian Shores won 10-1, and Aura won 8-2, as you see there on your screen. Oh, and actually, pardon me, that's the Bunting Division. Their finals will be at the Rec Center. Their top two teams are Shelburne and Honeywell, and I believe that Honeywell game actually was at also the Julie MacArthur YMCA, as we now are underway here at the Bayshore Community Center. Osprey now has possession of the puck in neutral zone, and here they come. Into the zone goes Sydney Carney, and just couldn't get it through with the offside and the puck will come just outside the twister zone. Early on getting things started, it, it, it just a little bit disorganized and the uh, puck bouncing around that neutral zone. But uh, from what I understand, Grand Valley can put the puck in the net, so things should change pretty quickly. In the neutral zone, flung out, the Twister flow out to retreat. Picked up there by Sadie. She goes to dump it in. It's blocked at the blue line. She'll pick up possession again and she'll dump it in. Bycroft goes after. Through the zone they go, but taken away at the half boards. Dump back into the corner. I think these must be pretty serious teams too. They play, they all got their names on the back of their jerseys and uh, Taken away there in the neutral, and here come the Twisters. On a partial break. Noah Martin around the net, dumps it around. Joshua Bryan will now pick it up. Flung across, taken away right away by Osprey, and here they come. Carter Bycroft in again. They're going to dump it around. He actually spins and goes to throw it to the point. But nobody home, and here come the Twisters. And a full head of speed comes Noah Martin. But Martin gets taken away there by Willow McCowan. And quite a few girls team on the, quite a few girls on this Osprey team. Well, I think uh, the fact that the, the, the young ladies are now starting to play hockey and the influence of our national team uh, is saying it's good, it's, it's okay to play. And we've got some pretty good young ladies coming around playing uh, minor hockey right now. So uh, they've got something to play for. That women's national team is huge. Carter Bycroft. Gets it taken away from him in the neutral zone, but he's able to fight for it back. He'll throw it forward, but nobody home. In deep there by the Hawks. Retrieved by the Twisters, and they will dump it out of their zone. Quite end-to-head -end hockey so far, but after it goes Jackson Ross, number three, with a full out of speed. Into the middle. Tries to get a shot away, but just couldn't get it. But has a chance. As it's in front of the net, Osprey finally is able to retrieve it and get it away from themselves as Bycroft. And they will get out of their zone. Austin Wilkinson way now through one through two. I believe that'll be called incidental contact. Poked, shot scores! The Twisters get on the board first. Nathan Walker tried to poke it, and the goal goes to Kyle Zuowski. And a 3.30 into the first period, one nothing, Grand Valley. Austin Wilkinson way managed to bring that puck up the right wing as he got up the right wing. Then you're, there was some incidental contact. Puck slid through and then towards the goal. And then, of course, somebody uh, was on Johnny on the spot to knock that puck in the net. So hopefully we'll see it on the replay coming up soon. Face off technically won by Osprey when it goes to the Twisters. Osprey flings it across. That puck is out by Osprey. And now the Hawks have possession. Sadie into the middle. 
Addison Hayes had to stick to it. After there goes Sadie. Carney. And now it goes up to Addison. And she just couldn't handle it. Derek Deacon coming in. Thumps it around. Osprey will be able to pick it up, and that's Carney. Carney stopped there for a second by a twister, but was able to get it out. That one flung into the neutral zone, and it goes after it is Addison Hayes, and she'll be able to dump it through the neutral zone. Slapped in back into the middle of the neutral zone, picked up by the Hawks. Trying to break it in. Four on three there in the middle. Off another stick, picked back up by Osprey. And they go to break it in. And that is Sadie Carney. It flings out, and here come Osprey. Cutter Bycroft tried to get it around one, just couldn't get keep possession of it. And now he, when he also couldn't keep possession through that deke. Picked up by Osprey. Blocked, and here he comes. Derek Deacon for his second straight rush. Caught in his feet. He just couldn't get real possession of it. Flung into the Hawk zone after it would go. It looks to be Bycroft. Bycroft with a weak rim around, but Deacon will fling it up to his defenseman. Carter Forrester, or pardon me, Carter Foster just couldn't get it. And now he's getting fought by a couple different black shirts, and it'll go out of the zone. Jacob Long will dump it towards the Twister zone, stop in the neutral zone. Carney will also try to dump it in, also blocked. Off a of skate, Carney with a couple other whacks at it, just couldn't get it through. And that one accidentally centered for Deacon. Centers it, unselfish play, and he won't necessarily be rewarded for it just yet. Actually, he won't have a number 20, so I'll go off the lack of the jersey, Thompson. Up to J Jackson Ross. Shot, blocked by a couple black sticks, and they're able to pump it out. At least at the top of the blue line. They're actually unable to get out of their zone. Blocked at the hash marks, here they come again. Deacon dumps it into the corner. Zukowski, who's got the only goal tonight. Centered, but nobody home. And here come the Hawks. And that's Bycroft. Gets it poked off his stick by Jackson Ross, but loses it in his skates. And back goes Kayla O'Neill. And she's able to get it out of the zone. Takes a tumble, was able to get it to the top of the blue line. Zukowski fighting for it there with, with Kayla and just couldn't get away. And now here come the Hawks in their zone. A little bit of incidental contact, a three-way there, and the puck will stay in the Hawks zone. Just for the second, though, but it's kept in again. The Hawks still do have possession of it in their own zone, but having a problem trying to get it out. Sikowski again going after it. Jacob Long now with possession. About two and a half minutes left here in this first period. one nothing in favor of the Twisters. Grand Valley, I'll tell you, just uh, in control so far this first period. Most of the game is being played in the, in the Osprey zone, so... Uh, here they come again. That's Jackson Ross on a fend off Sadie Carney who takes a tumble. I was watching, I believe it was Jacob Long having trouble getting into the ball, a bench there for Osprey. But here they come now, Sadie Carney just dumps it in. Blocked there at the blue line. The twisters again, that's Jackson Ross. Plays it off for Zulowski, plays it right back up for Jackson Ross. Make a pass, take a pass, and here goes Jackson Ross around the edge, taken right off his stick there by Willow McCowan. You said to talk to people that yesterday, last night, Gord. You make a pass, you're almost always gonna get the pass. True enough. And now here comes Austin, and it will be saved. Zulowski again in front of the net, trying to get his second tonight. Back up, Wilkinson way, trying to get the shot away, just couldn't get it off. 
and the Hawks will get that one out. Just in front of us here is Zawowski. Taken away at the blue line there by B Carter Bycroft. You just can't seem to get anything going, and that one will be called offside. Quite a delayed offside there, Gore, with 54 seconds left in this first period. Well, I tell you, this has been a quick period. <laughs> all of a sudden, we've been doing going both ends, but uh, one thing I really like about the Grand Valley team is they do pass the puck. We talked about if you accept the pass, you're going to get a pass. And these kids are trying to set up the, 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 the play, uh, trying to make it happen. And uh, haven't been quite rewarded for their, uh, although that first goal was uh, fairly uh, team oriented as uh, Wilkinson got the, probably got the assist on it. There's another shot on goal. And uh, so uh, that was a good play on his part. Absolutely, now with just 30 seconds left here in this first frame. Picked up again by Carter Bycroft. Seems to be the one trying to get the offensive attack going for this Hawks side. Now it's 20 seconds left. Slapped into the middle, picked up by Bycroft. He's gonna try to take a run at it. He goes to dump it up. I believe that would be for Sadie Carney. Now she's gonna go skate after it. 10 seconds left, the puck will just go wide and it will be called for an icing with 10.2 left in this first period. Well, there was a case of uh, the young man trying to set up the winger and just missed the pass coming down the right wing. And uh, I believe it was uh, too carny and she couldn't uh, get, uh, wasn't on the tape to tape, but uh, definitely the right idea. Faceoff is won by the Hawks. As time is going to trickle down here, the puck is going to stay at the boards. Thompson takes a whack at it. It will not get there. Oh, and Wilkinson, Wade just can get that one to his stick. He might have had a chance to get one off, but that will be it for the first period. one nothing in favor of the Grand Valley Twisters over the Osprey Hawks. Gord, you seem to be counting the shots there. What do they look like so far? Well, right now, it's, the shots are, are three to nothing in the first period. Uh, Osprey, uh, uh, Grand Valley has three on Osprey, so it's... Uh, um, not much uh, on net offense, but a lot of uh, a lot of action in the offensive zone for Ospreys. They they pick up the one goal, and um, or Grand Valley, pardon me, they pick up the one goal on a shot on goal, which was a good shot, a good play. So that Wilkinson brought the puck in, and he made contact with the puck slid through Johnny in the spot, picked it up, and got the goal. Absolutely, you say there, Derek Cordell, who's the starting goalie for Grand Valley, has not faced a shot yet, so we don't know if he can, you know, how good he is, is the word I'll use. We haven't seen him tested yet tonight, unlike some of the other players we've seen go goalie yesterday. We saw a lot of them getting tested and with differing of success. True enough, there was some good offense. There was some great goaltending yesterday afternoon, and, and also, too, a lot of the times we were doing the games, the goaltenders were really, really tested, and... Uh, uh, I was impressed with the goaltending yesterday afternoon, so we'll see what happens today. Kayla O'Neill will fly, fling it into the twister zone, picked up there by Jackson Ross. Ross around the a net, taken there at the half boards by the Hawks. Inside the offensive zone for the first time in a while as O'Neill puts that one on net, and I think that will go to the shot meter. They finally get rid of the goose egg very early in the second period. We'll see if they can get rid of their other goose egg on the scoreboard getting after recording their first shot. Well, Walker had to be good on this. Uh, you're going to see it on the Rogers replay. There's the shot just coming out across, across the ice. Faceoff is won there by the Twisters. It picked up there by Bycroft. He shoots, and it goes oh. in. It just beats him five hole, and I, I just said they might break the goose egg with their first shot after their first shot, and the next shot by Carter Bycroft, it's 1-1. 30 seconds into the second period. Didn't take them long to tie this game up. You're gonna see the buck come in front, just a shot, little tip in between the five hole as he beats Nathan Walker. You'll see it again. I'm not sure that Ross didn't get a pay, pay, his, his stick on it, caused it deflected down, but uh, ended up in the five hole, ended up in the back of the net, nice goal, 1-1 one, one tie. Jackson Ross likes to do that little ender on a grid, a little bit of speed. When he turns the edge, he's a little hard to catch. And there he goes, Jackson Ross. Through the slot, he shoots. Good save by Nathan Walker. Walker being stout on that one to make sure Ross, who 
as I said, tried to do the end around to get the full head of steam, and once he gets it, he's hard to catch. Oh, he's got great speed for a young that young man, and uh, had a good opportunity. And of course, <laughs> Blake didn't even. Pardon me, not uh, number seven was the goaltender. Is uh, Nathan Walker? He, I'll tell you, just was Johnny on the spot. Wilkinson way, it's blocked in front, and now here come the Hawks. That puck is slapped right in. It's a late offside there against the Twisters. The Lions will actually get the Twisters to finally go off, and they'll clear their zone. But now the Hawks have a bunch of free real estate. That one slapped the whole length of the ice, and it will go well wide, and that will be an icing against the Osprey Hawks. Well, we've got two goalies. Uh, one, number seven, is Nathan Walker playing for Osprey. And uh, Grand Valley goaltender, we, I, I'm not sure who that is. It'd be Derek Cordell, number 21. 21, Derek Cordell. I thought it'd be number one, Blake Thompson, because he specifically set out as the goalie, but unluckily, it doesn't look to be Blake is here. Like, I haven't seen a one yet in a black jersey. And now here come the Hawks. I believe that is Bycroft, and it is. The puck is put just past Carney, and she'll go after it. Carney has it at the boards, fighting for the couple white shirts. It's now up for Long. Jacob Long, he'll slap it. Picked up there, blocked by Hayes' stick, but it goes deep. After it goes, Willow McCowan. McCowan now has possession. She passes it up. That's Bycroft. Bycroft tries to get it up for Sadie. He just couldn't. But now a couple more whacks at it. It goes up to Sadie. Sadie just couldn't get real puck possession of it, but now she does. Sadie's got Addison with her. Puck just gets inside the zone, and here goes Addison Hayes, but it will be blown offside as the save is made anyway. See, Sadie Carney doing a great job down the right wing trying to get the control of that puck and get it inside. Did get it inside the zone, but unfortunately the offside uh, come and play the... Um, you know, at the beginning of the game, I, I got, not to admit the fact that I'm partially colorblind, but I thought those jerseys were maroon until they got right underneath me, and then I realized that they're black. <laughs> so, so, uh, That's why I was so confused when you said maroon. I went, I yeah. don't know which one he's thinking is maroon, but I'll go with it. Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I realize that uh, it's... Uh, it's it's white and not white. I'm okay with that. It's yeah. white and not white. <laughs> I'm not that... It's, it's varying shades that causes me difficulty, not necessarily... Uh, that, that one's just through the a zone there. I think that's O'Neal. Kayla just can't get the shot off. Picked up there by Hayes. And it's shot. It's blocked in front. Bycroft trying to get it back to his forehand. He does. Bycroft trying to get a whack at it. Just couldn't get it. But now Carney picks it up. Carney does have puck possession. Centers it for Bycroft. Wasn't expecting it. And now Kayla O'Neal goes to pinch. And she does. And By or, uh, Bycroft just couldn't get a hold of it. And now a hold of it. It looks like it'd be long. Or pardon me, it's Jones. Derek Jones with the shotgun save there by Cordell. That puck flung up. O'Neal will get a stick to it. Bycroft will slap it. He fans on it. Fans on it again. And the puck will get out of the zone. Couple little twirls there by Bycroft. But just couldn't get a good whack at it. That one's played right across. And now Carter Bycroft with a full head of steam. He's looking to try to get puck possession. Having a problem getting it out of his skates, but he's able to get possession now. In the middle is Hayes and Carney. He looks to take a shot on net. Picked up by Kayla O'Neill, centered. Neither could get a stick onto it. It was Hayes or Carney. But now he's got possession. Centers it for Addison. Just can get a stick to it. Now here come Osprey on a 2 on 0. And after it goes, the only the lone goal scorer, Kyle Zalus. Zakowski and a good save there by Nathan Walker. Possession now there for Osprey. Can't get out of their zone. Picked up there by Martin. And it is flung into the corner and after it goes Bycroft. Bycroft flings it up the boards. A little bit of miscommunication there. It looks like a line change was be starting to begin as Car he tried to get possession of it. Hayes also flung into Bycroft. He tries, tries to get it out. Picked up by Zakowski. Just couldn't get it down as it's flung back up. Jones will be able to get it out of the Osprey zone. And after it there, I believe that is Carney. Or no, pardon me, it is Hayes. Hayes backed up by Carney and she'll go after it now. 
Puck goes into the corner, takes a tumble. Carney in the middle. Addison Hayes shoots it just wide. Hayes having a good shift out there with the puck in the corner with it right now. Uh, not getting that chance to get it on goal and it just slid by wide on the, on the right side. Carney now has possession of it, flings it back behind the net. And after it will go Hayes. Hayes, Carney, and uh, Jones have out there quite a long time due to the short bench. That puck is flung all the way down. Zukowski is now after it. Taken away there by it looks to be Jacob Long. Around goes Martin. Noah Martin shot well wide. I don't know if Long got to stick to it. After it goes, it looks to be Hayes. After Zukowski just can get the puck off him and that puck goes deep into the corner. Carney now will place it off the boards. Slapped on towards that great job there by McC Willow McCowan and that puck will not get out. Jackson Ross keep, keeping possession. Ross now has possession of it. Ross looking for another shot. Zakowski will get a dip there from Ross. He'll go back to take his defensive position. That puck goes just past Sadie Carney. He'll go off the boards trying to pick that puck in and he does. But now the puck goes through and Sadie Carney has a chance to skate some ice. Lots of white in front of her and she'll just slide it. And a great cover there by Derek Cordell. He'll make sure he gets it by going nice and wide. And with 3.33 left in the second period, it's 1-1 one, one tie. That's one of the things you learn when you're starting to young and you're playing hockey like this. That, and that young lady, she went, got the puck, went up ice and all of a sudden got worried about somebody being close to her. So instead of just barreling for the net, she decided to shoot a long way out. Didn't have a lot on it, but it was the right idea to shoot. But you'll catch on at some point that uh, you have more time out there than you think. That puck is taken away there by Kayla O'Neill. Puck goes behind the net. Puck flung all the way around and Jackson Ross has a chance to skate and he's easily the fastest player and he'll get a hold of it but Bycroft looking to play a little bit of hustle and he will, looks like he just shoulded him away as he look, looks like a little bit overskated the puck. Ross gets it through McCowan, still has possession of it, a couple more whacks and that one will go out to McCowan who will just fling it out. And that will most likely be an icing and it will beat the clock and the puck will go all the way back into the Hawks zone. Well, I was just kind of looking at that puck sliding down the ice like that, and I was kind of thinking of a curling rink, you know, hard, hard. You should be sweeping it or doing something, but uh, they, uh, they had a little trouble in their zone controlling the puck, but uh, covered up front well in front of the net, and it was tough to get the puck through, and Ross had all kinds of time, but just couldn't get it in as he uh, had control in the zone a couple of times, and couldn't get the puck through the maze of players that were in front. After it goes, Hayes gets a good whack out of that pass. He ducked it as much mustard as it would have wanted. And O'Neill will get it out. Hayes just over skates it as that puck will stay in. After it goes, Carney. Carney will be able to shuffle it into the corner and she will have it between her skates behind the net. It's flung out and Bycroft will have a one on one opportunity against Jackson Ross. The one man he probably wouldn't want to see in that situation, but he's able to get around him, tries to get through his legs, and he does. Crop, Bycroft again gets through Ross. Bycroft shot it just wide. Look, tried to lift it past Cordell. Fanned on it there, Bycroft picks it up. He looks to put it back into the corner, and he does. Addison Hayes going to fight for it. Back up for Bycroft. He'll just try to lift it through, blocked there by Leith Wilkinson Way, but centered by accident, Long just can get a stick to it. And that puck will get out of the zone, and now after it goes, it looks to be number 12, Colton West. West now has possession of it. Well, he's had possession of it, now Bycroft looks to go retrieve. And Bycroft will not, picked up there by the Twisters behind the net. Both teams making, or, uh, 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 ooh, pardon me, Grand Valley making a line change there. That puck goes between a couple legs, and back goes Wilkinson way through a stick, and that one just goes wide. Centered in front, nobody home. Thompson wasn't expecting it. Carney now trying to get possession, or pardon me, Hayes trying to get possession of it. She will not get it out. Flung right back in there by Carter Fo Fo um, Foster. Puck behind the net. Hayes 
He's able to trap it up and will fling it around. Puck there picked up by Wilkinson Way. Just couldn't get it through. Again, Hayes shot by Wilkinson Way. Great save there by Walker. I don't think he saw it. That one's wrap around. I'll give that one a save as well. And now Carney comes away with it with 40 seconds to go. Carney's got Bycroft ahead of her. We'll see if she passes. She does. Bycroft's got a chance on a partial break. He does get a hold of it. Bycroft shot just wide. And now here come the Twisters. The other way on a one on one. Around goes to. Zukowski, Zukowski now on a break, gets around O'Neal, Zukowski shoots just wide, I don't know if Walker got a hold of a piece of it, Gord says he did. <laughs> 10 seconds to go, that puck just gets out of the Osprey zone. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind he got a piece of that puck and then stopped it. Jackson Ross goes around his net trying to get that full head of steam, I don't think he has time to though, as Carney goes to chase, and Carney will force him around and that will be the second period, and what an action-packed end to what was an action-packed period, 1-1 one, one tie between the Osprey Hawks and the Grand Valley Twisters. Uh, no doubt about that. That's, I tell you, this is uh, turning into an end-to-end -end, uh, time. I'll tell you, Ross, uh, for Jackson Ross, number three for, for Grand Valley, uh, has had an excellent two periods of hockey. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, Carter Bycroft's got a goal. He's had an next. Uh, the uh, Sadie Carney's been playing well out there. Addison Hayes, it, the last shift that she was out there was uh, all over the ice. Had a chance up front in the offense and then come back and played some solid defense. Here you've seen Zukowski coming in on goal. You're going to see the shot. And there's the stick save. Definitely got a piece of it. And what? of course, uh, Nathan Walker playing goal for, for Osprey. And uh, we're going to get the start. Something we did yesterday, we, you and I found out that uh, a lot of people in the rink are, are, are streaming and uh, the, the action that's going on the ice and they're listening to it. So uh, I just found out that, uh, but that's some of the people will be, will, will be streaming. So uh, uh, we just like to say hello to all those folks out there doing that. So Puck is now held in by Bycroft in his own zone. He throws it into his corner. Chase after it there by Noah Martin. Bycroft beats him, but it's picked up there. That one goes off the, up to the outside of the post there of Walker's net. He Stuck was not skate. paying attention to what was happening on the ice, but he got startled when that puck hit the side of the net. So did I, in fairness. <laughs> Jackson Ross again trying to do that end around. McCowan trying to cut him off. He'll go the other way. He's like, Bar he's like Barry Sanders in the backfield. And now he turns out with a full head of steam. Bycroft the only man back. Bycroft's gotta go catch him. Ross all the way around. Well wide, must put to the pass. He does, Zakowski's in the middle, so is Brian. Just can get a stick to it. And now Sadie Carney, he's got Bycroft with her. Carney, got it stuck in the boards, but you'll fling it, and it gets stuck until they get another whack at it. Blocked there by Bycroft. And now it's Bycroft and Carney. Bycroft through the middle, Bycroft shot, deflected, well wide. Ross made a nice block with the out in front of that net. It's Carney, who's the shooter, who's the goal scorer for Osprey. Had a glorious opportunity, couldn't put it in, but uh, good play now. And now Zukowski with another shot. Good save there by Walker. Both goalies making some pretty good saves here in this contest. A minute and a half gone in this third period. And that'll be Walker, and that one will be offside and a stick away there by Nathan Walker. You know, surprisingly, we're getting some uh, pretty decent goaltending. Uh, I mean, it's only one, one. These teams have scored goals. I mean, uh, I think it's uh, Grand Valley has 13 goals in the tournament. And uh, Osprey has nine. So, I mean, they have some offense. And uh, uh, so <laughs> the goaltending has been pretty solid today. Shots on goal so far is 10-2. Uh, Seven uh, Grand Valley uh, Osprey, uh, Grand Valley over Os off, over Osprey. So, but still, lots of chance. And there's a this is Carter Bycroft with the puck right now, and he he's had such a good game. Puck held in there by the Twisters, but a couple whacks out there by McCowan, and it won't go out. And that's Bycroft, I believe. And Bycroft tries to get around Jackson Ross, and he does, but he gets tripped down, and it will be a penalty against poor Jackson Ross. Was able to stop the rush, but at what cost, Gord? Because I mean, this is the first power play of the day, first power play in the game. Well, you're gonna watch the play here as Bycroft gets out, and Ross says, you know, okay. I mean, 
both referees' arms went up. You knew that that was a trip. The textbook, that's how they wrote it up, wrote it up in the rule book. But uh, Ross knew he was getting away. So we'll see what happens here on uh, the first power play and the first penalty kill of the game. You normally you see tactical fouls in soccer, not hockey, but I'll definitely call that one tactical as I think Ross just decided, you know what, I'll take the man. And well, you, know, sure. you know, sometimes you, you, as a coach, you're going to sit back and you're going to say, you know, you, you want to stay out of the penalty box, but every once in a while you get a good penalty, and that's one that was. He was away, and he's got a good shot, too. He keeps it on his forehand. And that is Bycroft. Got a hold of it now. Spins around. McCowan bu busting the net. Bycroft shoots it well wide. Carney now has the chance to take possession. Carney in the corner. Takes a tumble. Long's going to take a couple whacks at it, and it will knock it out of the, out of the zone for... The twister picked up by Bycroft. Bycroft's got Car Carney in front of him. Bycroft takes a shot. Final scores! Connor or Carter Bycroft. 2 1 Osprey on the power play. Well, the good penalty, as we described earlier, became uh, not as good when they ended up putting the puck in there. There's Bycroft again. Nice shot right on goal. He's going to get it through the five hole again. Actually, it was deflected in front. I believe number 10, Carter Foster, it I, went off his, or number 18 actually, it was uh, Austin Wilkins' way, and it went off his skate, went into the net. Tough play, because I think the goaltender had to cover it. And now Jackson Rosh, first out of the box, now from the, became his mistake, and Kayla Harris, O'Neill, pardon me, Kayla O'Neill will now be getting a call for tripping on Jackson Ross, and one gained, one lost. Osprey now has to go on the penalty kill. We'll see how this works out with Grand Valley. Have something, some of the fastest skaters, especially in Zukowski, who's got their lone goal in Jackson Ross, as you see the penalty here. Well, Jackson Ross is uh, quick and, well, that was a pretty chintzy penalty, if you ask me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, referees do a great job here uh, for this tournament, and uh, we thank them very much for their help. Without the referees, uh, this tournament probably wouldn't be go as well as the kids would be out there playing without supervision. So. Uh, Thanks to the referees and... Uh, and actually, I hope we can get a shot there. The referee is helping the goalie with, I believe, his skate straps. And that's another thing I love is the refs will go out of their way to help you if you ask. All uh, right. Especially around this age group. The, the U9 level is a U9 tournament. Bycroft out there again and uh, in control. Through Ross and now go after it is Addison Hayes. And she will apply pressure on Jackson Ross. And he tries to get a couple turns there. Too many black shirts in the way. Picked up by Bycroft. I think they have three forwards on the ice unless Hayes is the defenseman. Bycroft shoots just wide. And after it goes Sadie Carney. Carney trying to get a whack at it. And he can't. And guess who is Jackson Ross? Bycroft takes a couple whacks. Addison Hayes will now try to get away with the puck. And she will. And she will rim it all the way around. Carney and Bycroft on that side. Bycroft will meet it first, up for Carney, and now Carney has a chance to skate some white ice, and she does, and Carney picks it up. Hayes in the middle. Carney shoots it. Ross able to get there, though, just in time to make sure the shot's weak, but gives it away behind the net for Hayes. Hayes still has a chance to get another whack at it. She puts it into the corner. Realizing she's on the penalty kill, they're wasting a lot of time here in the twister zone. Well, just under a minute left in the power play. 11 minutes to go here in this third period. 2-1 in favor of the Osprey Hawks over the Grand Valley Twisters. Jackson Ross now has possession. Looking to get a full head of steam. Dumps it up the board for Zukowski. Zukowski, the lone goal scorer. Through the middle, a couple black shirts. Taken away there by Jackson Ross. Though Ross picking up the scraps. Backhander blocked in front. Center though. And by the net. Trying to stop and he does. Nathan Walker did a carry price. No look save there. And the puck somehow stays out with 20 seconds left from the power play. Great offensive chance at that particular time as that puck stuck, stuck around in that blue paint longer than I would have liked it as a coach. And uh, But then again, it's... Uh, it's action, it, but the lead offside against Osprey, and that will kill the rest of the penalty. Good job killing that penalty off as off, uh, Grand Valley had the opportunity. Friend of the box is Kayla O'Neill. She almost had a chance to break there. Puck dumped in there by Sadie Carney. Picked up by Willow McCowan. McCowan 
tries to dump it in. She just couldn't now and picked up by Noah Martin. Noah. Around that he goes. This Aus or this uh this twister team loves to do those end arounds, and now he'll get a full head of steam, and now Carter Bycroft realizes I might want to play a little bit of defense on that one. Bycroft did a really nice job of forcing him to the outside and then to make him turn around. He takes a tumble there. McConnell's got possession of it. Bycroft got possession of it, but Hayes actually does get possession of it. Up for Sadie Carney. Carney all alone on her side. She's able to get possession of it. She's got McCowan in the middle. In the middle for McCowan. Just couldn't get a stick to it. Or just didn't get a stick to it, but it's dumped into the corner. Picked up there by Bycroft. It's blocked. McCowan shot just wide, but Hayes goes to retrieve. And she does. And she'll center it for, it looks like Carney, but Bycroft shoots it. It's blocked again in the middle. It'll be dumped into the corner. I like that defensive play, though, by the Twisters. Oh, they did a nice job of, of cluttering up that middle, and uh, the Osprey team could not get a chance to put it Carney into now, the paint. Carney now trying to deal with a lot bigger Wilkinson way, and he'll take a shot from a mile out, and Walker got to stick to it well wide anyway. And Ka Kayla O'Neill will now have a chance to shoot it out. She gets a block there by Colton West. But now O'Neill will get it out, and it will just clear. It will not clear the zone. They give it to Jackson Ross. Ross now in. Backhander, well wide. Picked up there by Colton West. West all alone, centered, but nobody home. And here comes That's Carter Bycroft. Bycroft. Bycroft, who has two goals tonight, getting chased down by Ross. Bycroft. Can't get it through Ross, but he might be able to do the end around and he won't be able to. Ross, nice defensive play, getting back to play with Bycroft, who has some wheels too. So the two of them went toe to toe the whole length of the, the ice down there from just outside the blue line. And now Ross has possession time, and Ross will try to get around a couple different black shirts. He'll wait as the offside, and now he'll go to break in. But Hayes is there to meet him, and they still are offside. And Ross is a little shocked at that one because he tried to wait as long as he could. Well, he got everybody out, and then he made his move just to the outside a bit, and then went across the line and walked in uh, Wilkinson Way went offside. So, <laughs> looks like they're going to give Bycroft a rest. Boy, I'm telling you what, what a lot of ice time that. Well, when you only got two reserves on your team, you're kind of forced to play a lot of ice. And they're playing well, too. They're up two to one. Uh, they're not supposed to be up two to one. We were talking about at the beginning, they said that we figured that the Grand Valley would uh, would be the favorite. But right now, it's like any any time, any given day, any given Sunday is the word is somebody can win the game. Absolutely. As I, as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, Grand Valley already had beaten Osprey 7-2 in their second round robin game. So it's not like these two teams are new to each other. This is an already played game. And Osprey is here to play as it looks to be McCowan just flings it towards the net. And you gotta wonder if community goalie is the reason why that game was so, you know, out, out of whack is just having the um, the player playing goalie obviously that night just wasn't, I'll use the words off the task. I know Zakowski though getting away on a breakaway. In all alone on Nathan Walker. Zakowski around, just couldn't get it. Are they gonna call it a trip? They are not. I don't know if Walker ended up catching him there with the stick. <laughs> I don't think Walker meant to trip anybody, but boy, I'll tell you, he flung that stick out. I'll add Johnny Bauer, those folks that can remember that, and knocked the puck off into the corner and uh, on a very, very dangerous breakaway. Hey, he's up for Carney. Carney now off to get away. Wilkinson way. Carney fighting through Wilkinson way. Shot just wide. Carney's best opportunity tonight. Jones on the ice trying to make a, a flying poke check almost as that puck is dumped out and picked up by guess who, Carter Bycroft. Bycroft fresh off the bench. Hayes is a little offside and she has to get back cleared and they're trying to get her cleared and she will clear now and now Bycroft will try to make an attack as he'll probably dump it in. He will not, but it goes up for McCowan for Hayes who will just dump it in. And now she can go break in the zone. Wilkinson Way slaps it. Right up the board, picked up by there by Zukowski, and Zukowski now all in, all in, all in one more time. But I think he overskated it, and actually, he didn't. He dumped it in off the red line, and it's an icing call. I thought he had possession of it the whole way, and no, ended he up losing it. No, he got the icing, because he just let it go, thinking that he didn't have time. And uh, uh, every once in a while, you see the inexperience, and the new, the new players, the new things happen, and they don't, they, they don't 
they don't realize that they have lots of time and they do stuff because they think they, they have to do it in a hurry. Face off their one by. The Hawks, by Crawford, they get possession of it. Buck flung all the way down. I believe that will be number 25, Jacob Long. Flung right up there. Just misses Kayla O'Neill, and that puck will go past Ross. And actually, pardon me, it was number 26, Derek Jones. But now here comes Jackson Ross again with those bright red gloves. And he'll go through and Bycroft getting fended off there. And that sends the Twisters offside. It looked to be number 20 there. Who I, I Thompson, I don't have a first name for that young man. Was trying to uh, fend off Bycroft for Ross. And now Ross around shot. Good save there by Walker. Picked up by Bycroft. Bycroft around Thompson. Bycroft's got so much white ice to skate. Carney tells him go. And he'll go. And he'll shoot. And it's blocked. There by his numerical counterpart, Carter Foster. Well, Foster come across ice and just kind of uh, gave him a little bit of trouble as he was moving in there. And uh, he stopped and then, of course, tried to shoot it by him. And Bycroft will fling it back into the zone after it goes Kayla O'Neill. Kayla has a chance to center it, and she does. Carney trying to get a second whack at it, and she will. She gets around Ross, centered. Hayes still in the mixer. Hayes going to get a stick to it. She does ring just wide. Picked up there by Carney. Carney trying to center it. No, sir. Addison Hayes centered. Nobody home, and it will get whacked out after it goes by Croft. And Bycroft almost takes a tumble. Still trying to get away from his skates, and he'll go back for it again. Dumped up there for Jones. Jones now having a chance to skate around Jackson Ross. Jones technically centers it there for Kayla O'Neill, who will get a stick to it. Addison Hayes blocked it there from Colton West. That puck off the boards. Jacob Long gives it for Bycroft. Bycroft flings it in. Taken away there by Derek Deacon. Deacon now, again, I, I don't think I said his name once in the first. I said a lot in the second. Here he comes again in the third. He gets it through one. Deacon shoots. Good save by Walker. Shot again. Good, another good save by Walker. And there the save percentage. And it stays 2 1 here with about 3.30 left in this third period. As you'll see here in the replay. Just number 18 is uh, Austin Wilkins and Way. Uh, you were calling him Deacon, and I can understand why you would do that because they're both very similar sized players, and uh, you can see the chance that he had a couple of good, good save by the goaltender, and for three minutes to go in this game, and uh, Osprey is up two to one. Anybody's game right now. And that puck is kept in by Jackson Ross. But now the Hawks will be able to get it out, and they will. They go to retrieves, it is. Ross and he will he will push off their Wilkinson way. There will be a winner today, let me tell you folks, because if this game is tied, it goes to overtime and we'll play five minutes. Five on <laughs> Walker just missed that one. Ross with another opportunity at the net. That one just goes wide. I want to call that Bycroft as he'll just fling it up. And that one actually might go on target. And it will. And he'll ice it. Interesting call there by De Derek Cordell, but I'm always okay with, man, when in doubt, just ice it. We'll go for the faceoff. As you see there, I believe that would be Georgian Shore as they play in our next game at 115 against Oro, the Thunder, in what should be a very entertaining game. It will be because they were both offensively minded yesterday and we enjoyed doing those games well it should be fun one there. team scored seven in their game and the other one ten so eight eight and ten to be exact 18 between the two and now Zakowski with another chance 220 left in this third period Zakowski gets a stuck in his skates and down went long I believe to try to stop him Bycroft puts it off the boards Wilkinson way now shoots blocked in front there by long shot into the mixer Picked up again there by Wilkinson Way. Now picked up by Bryant. And that's Joshua Bryant. And that's Noah Martin, I believe, also getting stuck in his skates. But now it goes into the middle, and I want to call him Bycroft, and I believe it is, as that will be dumped all the way down, and Sadie Carney has a chance to skate after it. The puck will go just wide, and they will call it the icing. Great job there by Cordell to get his stick out of the way. 
tough thing to do in any hockey game with time on the clock. 143 is a is a, obviously a a uh, time is a, is the enemy right now for for Osprey as they are down two to one. And I'm wondering when we're going to see the goaltender come out if they're going to pull a goalie. Yeah, if if they're gonna, because we didn't see it yesterday when we saw the overtime game when it was five four with 35 to go. And yeah. they still they still scored with 12 seconds to go. So it did work out not pulling the goalie, but it was a surprise. Wilkinson way, slapper, just wide. I don't think Walker had a chance at that one. The clock isn't running. We'll see if they get it running here. Well, according to the... And they're going to, I think they're going to stop the clock. I think the ref was just informed. But here comes Zakowski. And they're going to find out here if the clock's broken, if that puck will go all the way down the ice. I don't know if our Rogers clock is right. I think it's right. And they will finally get the clock going. And they will ice it again. They're for the Twisters in Grand Valley. And we'll see what shakes out here if they're just going to play from what the clock was, or what the clock is now, which is 135. Because the clock will stop for a good no, 20 seconds. Referee's come over to the bench. We'll see. And there's a good, uh, our, Rogers clock says 104. So we'll see what they choose to be the right number. It should be at least below 110, you'd assume. And they're gonna let it run. We'll see how far they let it well, run. Well, even if they're, just let it want. Because I don't, I believe our Rogers clock is at least close to right, if not exact. And they're gonna, Hold for four seconds. So they're actually going to play with whatever clock they had. So about 125 left here in this period. And here comes Zikowski. Using the little bit of a break there to get the extra legs, but taken away there at the blue line. And that puck will get slapped out by Addison Hayes. Now You're Jackson calling Ross. the goalie, but you won't come. Ja Jackson Ross. And now they will finally get hold of every single parent. Shot, scores! They don't need him. Jackson Ross, 2-2. Two, two. Doesn't surprise me that Ross gets the goal. He's been all over the ice this afternoon. And uh, unfortunately for, uh, for Osprey. And uh, good, good shot, good save. But Ross has had all kinds of opportunities being, being stopped by by the goaltender, uh, Nathan Walker, and Walker has been stellar. One minute left in the game, and uh, we saw the replay on that particular goal, so it was a really nice job by, hey, but one, one tie now. We will go to overtime, we'll go five on five. Here comes Martin down the right wing. Noah Martin there, trying to get around McCowan. Just couldn't. Flung in, taken by Bycroft. Just under 50 seconds left here in this third period. As Gord said, if they, there is no winner here, we'll go to a five minute, five on five overtime. And if that's not solved, I believe we'll go to a shootout. But Jackson Raw, shot, great save by Walker. It just gets steered wide. 30 seconds left here. Ross again, centered, Martin shot, scores! Heartbreak in Osprey, it's 3 2 Grand Valley. Oh, uh, you're so right. Martin, um, what a heartbreaker because Osprey was in control of this game up until the last two minutes. There's a good shot, good goal. You can't, it's not one of those off the helmet, off the backside, off the shin pad. It was well shot, well in the net. And Ross gets upset and uh, you certainly can't blame Nathan Walker for that one. 30 seconds exactly left on the clock here. 3-2 now, Grand Valley. How it was 2-1 about 30 seconds ago, I don't know. But now Jackson Ross has possession of it. 20 seconds to go. Osprey's got to get at the puck possession. Bike Rogers can get a hold of it. That puck is dumped in, blocked there by Sadie. Carney trying to get a kick to it. Wilkinson way, dumped in. O'Neill just getting a stick to it. And that might do it. O'Neill around her own net. Dumped up there, Bycroft might get a stick to it now, but that will do it. And Grand Valley pulls out a shocker, 3-2 over the Osprey Hawks. 
Osprey played so well. They, they had 2-1 lead on, uh, on uh, Grand Valley, and uh, Grand Valley just wouldn't give up. And uh, of course, you know what? Jackson Ross, Noah Martin, and Kyle Zerkowski, probably the best three players on on the Grand Valley team. And uh, you know what? Those are, they, those are Ross and, and Martin scoring goals in the last minute. Hey, uh, those are the guys that they're carrying the puck, carrying the play. We're beaten by a really good goaltender in Nathan Walker time and time and time again. And we're going to have uh, some uh, presentations on the ice. And of course, uh, uh, there's a little there's a little tro there's a little trophy and they're going to get uh, the presentations here as we're going to turn around and uh, face the camera or the music and um, you see the players lined up to get their the trophies and uh, wow that was a good game it started out to be you know so so and 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 uh, I really uh, was surprised we were we were looking at we, we thought Osprey Osprey would run away or Grand Valley would run away with it and they because they are, their their goals four goals against was just unreal. And they'd already played this team and had beaten them. Never expected the game to go the way it did. 3-2 uh, uh, win in the last 30 seconds of the game. So it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. It went from 2-1 Osprey with about a minute and a half to go to 3-2 Grand Valley with about 30 seconds to go. So at all of one minute, Grand Valley did not score just one goal, but two goals while trying to pull their goalie, which was a funny sight to see, Gord, I expect for you as well. Should we... Should should we, should we do? Um, should we cause, cause controversy and realize and tell you that the clock was down to, to, to one side? No, we're just kidding. Uh, you'll see the. Uh, that, this is this is fabulous. And uh, these kids come out, play hockey. They play their hearts out. Uh, uh, we obviously looking at uh, Jackson Ross probably scoring the winning goal as the player of the game for 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 Grand Valley. But he's been all over the ice all day. We talked about it, how well he played. And, and But don't take anything away from his line mates, too. I mean, you're looking. So we're, we're, looking, at, we're looking at that. And, and uh, he's got Zakowski was the other one we were looking at, and also Noah Martin. So we look at those three players. But then again, the too, player of the game, no doubt, uh, Carter Bycroft scored two goals. Uh, you've got to give out a mention to Nathan Walker playing goal again at 3-2. He made some really good stops. He forced people to make shots they weren't ready to get. So, I mean, as far as the goaltending is good, those are my picks. I don't know about yours. Uh. Well, absolutely. I agree with you. I'll mention also Austin Wilkinson Way was really good there for um, Grand Valley. He had a really good opportunity. He was the really big body. He was making some things happen. And then up for Osprey, I'd say the two girls, Addison Hayes and Sadie Carney. Quite a few girls in the Osprey team, but Sadie Carney and Addison Hayes, the line mates of C Carter Bycroft, were flying up and down the wings, playing really good defense, I thought. And I thought they played really well there on his sides, making sure he was, you know, keeping him honest. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that really is a, um, you know, exactly what you were talking about. And the, the, those kids, those kids, those two girls play extremely well, and uh, good puck sense. Uh, uh, got some time to work on their skills, and they hope they keep at it because they've, they've, they've the potential is there to be really good hockey players. And uh, uh, it, 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 it's just fun to watch these kids play. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. Honorable mention to those two, kids, to Addison Hayes and uh, Sadie Carney. Um, yeah. Excellent job. Of course, Bycroft, player of the game. Yeah, we're, we're pretty well on the same page. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Two goals, not, got both goals. That doesn't happen very often, and we agree on anything. So, I mean, uh, it, it's kind of cool. But uh, we hope you folks will enjoy watching this uh, telecast when it comes into your, into your, into your living room. And uh, we certainly have enjoyed bringing it to you on Rogers TV. We've got another game coming up right after us. And also, be, uh, uh, this is not going live right now. We'll, we'll give you the, the, the game probably at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock this afternoon. So uh, on behalf of Spencer, Mark Perry, and the crew, I'm Gord Chapman. We hope you enjoyed our hockey game here on Rogers TV.